In the sea, as everywhere else, everyone has got to eat. Some are grazers nipping algae on the bottom. Others wait for a meal to come to them. And others grab a meal on the run. Some eat plants, some eat animals, but they all have one thing in common. They are part of a global solar-powered food web. You see, the sun's energy allows plants like this giant kelp to grow. This sea hare is an herbivore or plant eater. By eating the kelp, the sea hare is converting kelp energy into sea hare energy. Enter the sun star, a type of starfish that is a carnivore or meat eater. This predator converts sea hare energy into sea star energy. This flow of energy from the sun through herbivores to carnivores is repeated in almost every ecosystem on Earth. But often the connection isn't so obvious. For instance, even though you usually can't see it, the rocky bottoms of tropical reefs are covered in a thin film of algae. And lots of herbivores eat the algae, changing plant energy into animal energy. These yellowtail surgeon fish constantly graze on the algae, keeping the bottom well manicured. But different algae eaters have different strategies. Rather than wandering the reef in search of food, some fish are stay-at-homes. Here, a farmer damselfish protects his lush garden of green algae from a grazing sea urchin. This homebody doesn't take kindly to uninvited dinner guests. Out here in the open ocean, many creatures like this whale shark dine on organisms so tiny they are invisible to us. This is the world of plankton. Microscopic planktonic plants use the sun's energy to grow and are in turn fed upon by microscopic animals. These creole fish are the next strand in the food web. They are carefully picking at tiny planktonic animals drifting in from the open sea. In shallow water, these clumpy patches of barnacles are parked for the long haul. They're plankton eaters too, but since they're stuck to the rocks, they can't go out hunting down yummy plankton. Instead, they use their feather-like feet to reach out and grab drifting plankton. But since they can't move, they're defenseless against some predators, like the eagle ray. Flying in for a light lunch, this one stops to dine on a clump of barnacles, munching them with powerful jaws. Actually, the teeth of the eagle ray are fused into hard grinding plates, and with these tough choppers, they can cruise along the reef making a snack of almost anything with a shell. Eagle rays aren't the only eager barnacle eaters on the reef. Notice the teeth on this hogfish. Like the eagle ray, these hogfish are perfectly capable of biting through the shells of barnacles, making the term protective shell seem like a bad joke. And just when the barnacles think the coast is clear, in comes the cleanup crew looking for leftovers. But who eats the cleanup crew? This eel may be the next strand in this part of the food web. And so it goes until you reach top predators like these sharks. When people enter the water, we too could become part of the underwater food web. To this great white shark, a top predator, we would be little more than a helping of animal energy. But who eats these top predators? The answer will surprise you. Tiny bacteria. When they die, sharks will be digested by bacteria and converted into raw materials to fertilize the next generation of algae, which, with the help of the sun's energy, will begin a new cycle of life. The important thing to remember is, it all starts with the sun. Some eat plants, some eat animals. But if you think about it, they're really all eating the same thing, sunshine.